no. From the Mousecapade Studios, here are your hosts. Happy Friday, Mousecapade listeners. This is Vicki, and I'm here with Brad. We pray that you're staying safe, happy, and healthy. This is episode 751, and you're listening to the number one podcast that entertains that space between your ears, the Mousecapades podcast. Before we get started, we'd like to remind you that the Mousecapades podcast is part of the Your Story Travel Company. At Your Story Travel Company, we can plan a magical trip for you anywhere in the world. Text Vicki for a free quote at 636 373 Four four nine seven. And Vic, before we get started, um, I just wanted to mention to the listeners, this was your first week back to school, right? With kiddos. <laughs> yes. And I only mention that because you you usually have a Disney themed room, right? Is yours still Disney themed this year? It's yeah, it's more than usual, actually. Okay. And so what are some of the best or the most common comments you get from kids about your room and Disney? Everybody loves it, but uh, this group in particular, I have one little boy that just got back from a Disney cruise, two kids that just got back from a Disney trip before school started. So I think it just kicked their year off right. And then I have three students that will be at Disney World in the fall when we go for fall break. So um, today they they did a get to know you sheet and it was all Disney related. And it, they didn't have to make Disney comments on it, but a bunch of them did, so that was fun. Um, one, one of the things on it said, three things that make you happy. And a bunch of them put Disney as one of their three things that make them happy, so. Nice, and I also know that you play, like when they're working sometimes, you have like a Disney playlist going in the back, right? For the background music. Yeah, I just think it's funny because I've done this for years but this group must be more Disneyfied and musical because we usually just play instrumental and every once in a while someone will catch what tune it is and they were singing. They sang almost the entire soundtrack to Encanto, or excuse me, Encanto today and there were no words with it at all. They just knew it from listening to it and yesterday they were singing Mary Poppins songs so just fun. Wow. I mean, I do the same here when I'm working at home. It's mine are not exclusively Disney. I mean, I know you have to keep yours. You can't play certain songs, Uh, but mine is very eclectic here at home. I mean, I spend some playlists that go from Disney, Southern Gospel, rock, classical. I mean, so you're going from, I'm going from James Taylor, Criss Cross to DBC and Mozart back to Poison and Def Leppard in the 80s, all the way up to the most recent ones. It's all over the place for me. But there is a commonality in music. I will say that there's a commonality because I'll hear some things sometimes in like a classical, like Beethoven symphony or whatever. And I'm like, oh, you know, you fast forward ever how many years to like the past 10 years. And you're like, oh, I can hear that influence in that song. So it's all very much related and very much influenced by each other. So I just wanted to start the show off that way uh, because we are going to be talking about trying to capture some of the magic with a walkthrough today, but you're going to tell us more about that. Yeah, we're going to do that while I try not to fall asleep. Yes. <laughs> First week blues for teachers, I'm telling you. It's, it's been a good week. It's just, it's a, it's a, it kicks your hiney for sure. It hits hard. Yeah. So, well, it's been a little while. We started this series and Brad told you when we started it that it wouldn't be necessarily consecutive because a lot of times we have trip reports and we know for sure um, the next few Fridays are going to have trip reports because Joey's in England right now. And when he returns, his is probably going to be at least a two-parter and Kaylee's in Chicago right now. So we'll cover some Chicago stuff when she gets back also. So probably the next three weeks will be taken, but this is going to be a walking talking tour of epcot you know we did magic kingdom two episodes not too long ago i can't remember exactly which month it was i know it was not that long ago though so uh we just thought we would go ahead and i'm gonna let brad start us off all right so if you're at the front of the park epcot we're talking epcot straight ahead is a huge fountain 
and that celebrates Epcot's 40th anniversary. And also straight ahead is the large orb, or the geodesic sphere, known as Spaceship Earth. And so that's one of our family favorites is Spaceship Earth. We love that ride. Um, I know sometimes they have issues with the track in that ride, and it stops quite often, I guess, because... It is a continuously moving ride, but it's one of those that can be stopped if they have to stop it. But it's just classic. Um, I don't know if they're planning to add a scene or revamp scenes anytime soon, but it could use some updates. But our family just thinks this is a classic. We love to hit this ride every time we're in Epcot. Yeah, it's a tour of time. When Kaylee first wrote it, she said it was her ancient civilization class all in one ride. Yeah. And before the pandemic, there was a huge refurbishment scheduled. And I think right now, until uh, Disney decides or finishes Moana, probably they're going to have that on hold because it's pretty extensive. And I know they they want to have some more availability for guests. They don't want to just have things shut down. They It was like that for such a long time with all the construction going on. So that's Spaceship Earth. So then Vic... You can move us along as we continue our walk, our virtual walk. (laughs) That's right. So on either side of Spaceship Earth are types of stores. One has more like general souvenirs than the other one is more like Disney art and like pricey pieces. I've been in there. We've been in there. We looked at some of those and we're like, "Um, can't afford that. Can't afford that. Well, we could, but we'd have to give something else up. Yeah. Yeah. Like clothes. No, I'm just kidding. Or an entire Disney trip in some cases. Wow. So we're going to actually take you um, around the park starting to the right. I know that's counterclockwise, so I apologize to all of you guys that like to go clockwise. But for some reason, in my mind, this is how this park works. So that's how we're starting out. So we're going to the right of Spaceship Earth and you'll come to the Seas Pavilion. And this is different since they started all this construction. It didn't used to be this way. So you come to the Seas Pavilion. The Seas Pavilion contains Finding Nemo ride, a lot of large aquariums and smaller aquariums with many different types of sea creatures in there. You can sometimes watch them feed some of them. There's an ocean play area with a fake shark that kids can climb inside of. The uh, show Turtle Talk with Crush, you know, from Finding Nemo. Dude. Focus, dude. So (laughs) it's a really cool show. Even if you don't have kids, I'd encourage you to go in there because first of all, Brad's favorite, air conditioning. But second of all, it is fun to see the technological way that they are able to interact with you. So it has this big screen and it has the turtle, but behind the screen, there's a camera going on thing and they can see the kids in there and the kids raise their hand and the turtle talks to them. And it's literally according to the questions that they ask. And the movement. I mean, the, the what's on screen is animated. It is an animated thing, but the movement of the mouth coincides with whomever is talking really behind the screen. And they're talking real time, answering real questions. So it's doing it real time that it's rendering this. So it's very cool. And so it's never gonna be the same thing twice. Because right. I can't imagine that you would get the same crowd asking of kids asking the exact same questions. Probably, especially not kids asking right. the same questions. Um, on the back side of the Seas Pavilion is also the sit-down restaurant Coral Reef. If you've watched Full House, the original Full House, when they go to Disney World, uh, Danny is eating in that restaurant when he was dating Vicky. Um, but it has a lot of good seafood. It has at least one steak and one chicken dish, but it's just a cool atmosphere. And so you see the other side of the aquariums that you see when you're in the actual seas pavilion on the other side. So it's a really cool experience. And we spent an extra lar- uh, amount of time there this past Christmas when my mom went. And I figured we would because it's just really relaxing and we just love ocean animals. Yes, love, love that restaurant. And so we are moving on. And so if you leave the seas and you head right, you're going to come upon the land pavilion. So it's the seas and now the land. 
So inside the land pavilion, you're gonna find the Garden Grill, and that's a sit down restaurant with Mickey, Pluto, and Chip and Dale. And that's characters, right Vic? Yeah, those are the, it's a character meal. I forgot to say something about that though. That restaurant is on the round and I always forget that. While you're eating, it turns around and you can see parts of the ride living with the land. You can't, it's very slow. Like it's not- It's not a merry-go-round. No, it's not a merry-go-round. It's just very slow, but it is moving. So that is cool. And so you enter the land and you're on basically what is the second level, right? You enter on the second level and then you got to go down the stairs or an escalator. And down there is where you find living with the land, which is the ride living with the land. And yeah, talk about what kind of ride that is. That is another favorite ride. I like to call a bench ride. It's <laughs> just, you know, that's it's basically the bench, a bench on water. And you're just floating through this. I guess it's called a lazy river. I mean, it does. They do control it with you know, it's got a ramp and it's got a track, but it's basically you're going very slowly floating through the scenes and they take you through like agriculture, you know, and you pass a fish hatchery and definitely a garden, which is where they grow most of what they serve or a lot of what they serve in the restaurants at Disney uh, are grown here when you're riding through when you see these melons and tomatoes and cucumbers and all this stuff, they serve that actually in the restaurants in Disney, which is very, it's a very cool connection to know that you're seeing where they're actually grown. So love it, love it, love it. And also on the lower level with the garden grill and living with the land is Soren, one of our favorites as well. We love this ride. And I believe that they now have the new the new scene going, right? The new one. It's uh, around the world instead of right in California. Correct, around the world. So yeah, it's good, like it. It's always, I mean, I'm not a heights person at all. I don't do heights, but I can do this ride all day long. There's just something about it. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. It's just so cool and it smells, everything, the smells, so interactive. Yes, very much so. There is one more thing. There is Sunshine Seasons, and that's a quick serve. And so that's also on the lower level. And we've eaten stuff there, and I have nothing against it personally. That is not my favorite, and there's so many people. So give it a try. Maybe it'll be your favorite. Yeah. To us, it's just another quick serve. It's nothing like spectacular that we would write home about. And it, it is good, and it serves its purpose. But um, I know some people live and die by Sunshine Seasons. Like, that's their go-to place. Yeah, I would say there are some quick serves that are a notch above, in our opinion. This isn't one of them. We, we think this one is just regular run-of-the-mill, if you will. Kind of like a mall. Yeah, kind of yeah, kind of a food court-ish kind of a food you're going to get. So, But it is what it is. Might hit the spot on a very hot day. Yeah, well, it's air-conditioned. And it's air-conditioned. Right. So after you leave the land pavilion and go out to the right, you're going to come to Journey into the Imagination of Figment, which I know a lot of people have comments on. But if you have small children or any age children up to probably 10 or 12, they will probably like this. Is it cheesy? Of course it is. But does that matter? No, it doesn't. It's Disney. It makes it fun. And again, I know some adults that this is their favorite ride because they remember it from when they were a child. Mm -hmm. So it's this purple imagination dinosaur figment and it's hosted by scientists and they take you through the pretty much this five senses basically. That's in there. It's not that long, but it's also an omni mover ride. So it's constantly moving, get a lot of people through. And then there's some sensory things that you can do when you get off that works your touch, taste, all that kind of stuff. When you get off the ride, there's different areas that you can go to and play around to extend your visit in that pavilion itself. Then also in connected to that is Pixar shorts. Again, you know how the Pixar movies start with a little short. Well, Disney has like three of them that they play there. I can't remember what was there the last time we were there. They usually change out two of them and one of them has been the same since they opened that, but it's a 4D experience. So just be prepared for that. And one of my favorite shorts is Piper, which 
We just got back from our trip to Myrtle Beach and there were lots of Piper birds on the beach. And it is evident that Disney did their homework. I mean, if you see that bird on the beach doing what it's doing, you know, the waves would come in, it would rush in right after it to dig into the sand to get the shells. Exactly the same behavior, the same movements. I mean, Disney, as always, did their homework because when I'm watching that Piper short, you can hardly tell that it's animation. I mean, it looks so real. Mm -hmm. So it's really good. But all the shorts are good. I've liked all the ones that they have in there. It's good. And if you have Disney Plus, you can watch those as well. You won't have the same uh, 4D experience as you will when you're at Epcot, but that's okay. Right. Then next to that, if you have a Chase Visa card, is the Chase Visa picture spot. And they'll ask you to show your card, but only people can go in there and have the Chase Visa. And you can have a special character interaction with Disney characters. And you never know which ones it's going to be. It's a surprise every time. Now, I think more than not, we've had Goofy and Mickey bread. I can't be positive. I'd have to go back and look at our pictures. Mostly, yeah. Honestly, it's your family and those characters. It's just a thank you from Chase Visa for allowing or for letting you be a part of their lives and using their cards. So yeah, can't beat that because that Chase Visa also gets you 10% on some of your meals and in the gift shops. And I will say, since it is a specialized spot for characters, you typically don't have as long of a wait as you would for like just a normal for the masses spot for characters. And honestly, we didn't even know about it until... Ah, six years, I think, of of us going there and one of our friends mentioned it to us. It's almost like a hidden, like you got to know it's there. It's a gem. A hidden gem. Yeah. All right. So moving along, when you leave that Pixar short area and you continue to the right, you're going to head towards the World Showcase and you'll be able to see the World Showcase Lagoon straight ahead, which that's where the nighttime show Harmonious plays. And when you go right into the World Showcase, you come first to Canada. And there's a Canada kiosk that has soda, adult beverages, and maple popcorn. Because Canada, maple, all things maple, because it's Canada. You know, maple leaves. Right. Maple corn, Kaylee will give you 10 out of 10. Yeah. And there's also a sit-down restaurant, Le Cellier, and it's known for its mouth-watering steak. We've never eaten there, have we? No, it. we've always done the dining plan into the last couple of years, and it was two dining points, and I just couldn't give up my dining points. I do want to at least do this restaurant once, just to say we've done it, but yeah. Okay, we'll do it on one of our adult trips. Yeah, but this is one that we have not done yet, so yeah, we got to hit that up. And then there's a Canadian store that has totem poles out front, which are filled with Canadian souvenirs, including maple suckers. Again, everything maple. And in the back of the Canada Pavilion is a beautiful waterfall, and it's a great picture spot. And there's also a brief video that shows a little bit of history about Canada. And we've never watched that video before. And I don't know why, because we watched the French one before, but who knows? When you leave the Canada Pavilion, you head to United Kingdom. And there are several little stores. They have those really cool red phone booths. They're on the right-hand side by the bathrooms in case you need to know where those are. And then across from that, there is a sit-down restaurant that serves traditional food from United Kingdom, most importantly, fish and chips, uh, called Rose and Crown. Ironically, when I went there, I didn't eat fish and chips. I had an amazing burger. But either way, the food was delicious there. And across, going back across the street to there is a really cool tea store where we got my mom some teas, but they have like all kinds of tea because you know tea time's three o'clock in United Kingdom they also have little uh, shortbread cookies that go with it because that's the thing that you eat at three o'clock but you drink your tea and eat your cookies also back behind there you can sometimes meet Mary Poppins and Alice in Wonderland and Winnie the Pooh Tigger Piglet so you just have to check your itinerary when you're coming in the park grab a map and grab a little it's like an extra piece of paper that goes with the map and it tells you the times that you can greet with these characters. Then right before you get to the next place that Brad's going to talk about, so I won't give it away, it's still it's connected to the back side of Rose and Crown because they use the same kitchen, is the Yorkshire County Fish Shop. 
there you can also get fish and chips. It's not as many as you would inside the sit down restaurant, but it's a nice portion and Brad likes it a lot. It is. It's really good. I get this. I've gotten this twice and it's re- been really good both times. Um, just really fresh, which is what I like. So not very fishy. So if you're kind of, if that kind of turns you off, you might be okay with this because it's really fresh. And then moving on right past the United Kingdom is the International Gateway. Now this is also the back entrance to Epcot. Uh, the Swan, Dolphin, the Boardwalk, the Beach Club, and the Yacht Club guests can actually walk to the back entrance of Epcot here, or they can take a friendship boat also. And this is also one of the places you can also pick up the new Skyliner form of transport, which is quite popular. And if you need a little break from the park, we like to use it for a ride. We do. And it's very nice. It's very smooth. It's not air conditioned, but we have learned that that doesn't really matter because they did a great job designing those. You really can't tell even when it's hot, it's still cool enough. And I never thought it would be, but it is. So then over the bridge from the International Gateway, you go right into the France Pavilion. So if you go all the way to the back of the pavilion, this is the new section that opened up most recently. And it has some wonderful new bathrooms. Can never have enough bathrooms at Disney World. It has a crepery, which has savory and sweet crepes. And you can either get it at a window and just do a quick serve version of it, or you can actually go in and sit down. And then of course, the new ride that everybody was waiting for, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And so that's all back in there. When you come more towards the front in the older section of the France Pavilion, there is a souvenir shop with French types of souvenirs and uh, t-shirts and mugs and all that kind of stuff. It's also where the patisserie is that we talk about probably more than most restaurants because it is such a reasonable thing and you can get things like lobster bisque and a ham and cheese croissant and le croque monsieur and I'm trying to think quiche, creme brulee, uh, beignet, how could I forget that? So that is in that pavilion as well. There's a perfume store which I can't go in just because it's so many scents, it's a little overwhelming. So if you have any kind of allergies, beware of that. There's also this other store. I know it has like, it's not Italian ice. It's some kind of French ice cream place and it has coffees and stuff, but it doesn't have the same things as the patisserie. Then there's also a sit down restaurant, Le Chefs de Francais, which we've eaten at many, many times because both our kids took French and they wanted to go there while they were taking it. We haven't been in a while, but it's really, really good. That's where we first had lobster bisque, the best lobster bisque we ever thought we'd had ever in our lives and so then they started selling it in the patisserie so we don't have to make those reservations but we still get our soup and there is sing along with Belle at Beauty and the Beast sing along which sometimes is impressions de français which is a little video about France they switch out so you again check the little time sheet that you get that comes with your map they're in two different slots. You're going to have to pick both of them up, but you can find it. This is also where you can sometimes meet and greet with Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Correct. And at Christmas time, I love that they have Père Noël. Yes. And things like that. You know, they have different characters of that country. And it's just interesting to see the different ones. So I like that. Yeah, me too. And so then beyond France, you keep going and you will get to Morocco. And in Morocco, there's a sit-down restaurant called the Spice Road Table. And as we've told you in the past, Disney took over the rights to the Moroccan Pavilion last year when Morocco gave up their rights to that. And the other sit-down restaurant and the quick serve restaurant are now closed. And there's a small Moroccan souvenir shop and a place where guests can get henna tattoos, which I believe you actually did once. I did. Yep. And then you can also meet Aladdin and Jasmine, which makes sense. But check your times. Yeah, always check your times because they switch it up in this park a lot. Yeah. It can be all different things going on all different times on different days. So just got to watch it. Yeah, because we don't want your kids to be disappointed if that's what they were specifically looking for. Next, we're coming upon Japan. So to the right, there's this really tall two-story building. And on the top floor, you have traditional Japanese restaurant where they cook the food in front of you. Probably one of Joey's most favorite meals, Tepanado. And then they also have a sushi restaurant up there. You can get sushi at the sit-down, 
but you can't get the cooked food at the sushi restaurant. But either way, you get good food there. Underneath those on the bottom level is a huge, unique store. It has all kinds of things from Hello Kitty to foods that they have from Japan. And we've told you guys many times, Kaylee loves to go in this store and get new foods that we've never tried before. And one of the things, and I think we have talked about this before also, is in Europe, their sweet foods are not American sweet foods. Our sweet foods are insanely sweet next to theirs. So they'll have like these little baby jello cups and call that a dessert. And it hardly has any sugar in it. And then they come here and eat our chocolate cake and they about go into a diabetic coma because we have so much sugar. So just go in there sometime. It's just really fun. And it's it's neat to learn things about different places. Across from the restaurant in the store is a quick serve Japanese restaurant. It's really kind of funny because to me it kind of looks the same shape as like um, Burger King or something. But it's all Japanese food in there. But there's also some beautiful Japanese landscaping and water features with koi fish in there and kind of like a little hidden place to sit down with some shade if you have some good food. But I need to stop talking about it because apparently some of our listeners have been going there because it gets more and more crowded every time we're there. And they also have Japanese drummers that drum from time to time. Again, if you're wanting to specifically see them, you need to check the schedule along with sometimes being able to meet Mulan. Yeah, people, I think, are finding out more about these secret hidden spots the more time goes on because they keep getting more crowded. Well, I think it's funny because they've been there all this time. We didn't notice that specific one until 2020. Yeah. All right. Next up, as Sam Eagle would say in The Muppets, a tribute to all nations, but mostly America. This is the American Pavilion. Here we are. Uh, It's next on our tour around the world showcase. And inside the building, you can listen to the Voices of Liberty. It's a singing group. Uh, Exceptionally talented musicians singing harmony together. And across from the building is an American Garden Theater where many concerts take place and where the Candlelight Processional has taken place for years. And there's also a funnel cake kiosk, the Fife and Drum Tavern, Joffrey's Coffee, and Regal Eagle Smokehouse. Speaking of Sam Eagle, I forgot to mention that also inside the Pavilion, Brad, is that show that talks about how America comes to be. Yes. With that amazing music by John Williams. And I'm not sure how I forgot that, but I did. Which we've seen that, and it is great. Again, it's really not meant for this, but it is air conditioned and comfy seats. You could take a little snooze. I started to say it is also air conditioned. It's also a seat. And so I have been known to grab a nap in here, even though it's a great show. Sometimes your body just takes over and you need a nap. (laughs) So it's elevated show because when they're moving the animatronics around, they're almost like on a Ferris wheel kind of situation where they go around and come up and round and come up. It's pretty amazing because it was made a long time ago again. One of those things where you're just like, who thought of this? And it was way before it's time. Yes, it's very cool. Italy is the next country. It's probably one that we visited a lot since we started. They have a new Gelateria Toscano. So we've not seen that yet. Obviously, Mm. they sell gelato, which we probably don't need to know about. Although I don't think gelato, again, they don't use as much sugar as we do here in America. So it might be something that we should try. We have tried Tutto Italia two or three times, probably in the first few times that we went there. The thing that's good about Tutto Italia is, uh, and I'll never forget Joey, Mom, why does this macaroni and cheese or fettuccine Alfredo taste so good? because they just made your noodles in the back. And he was amazed at that situation. They did what? They were made fresh. They didn't come out of a package and have to be boiled or anything like that. They were fresh noodles. If you want a true Italian experience, Tutto Italia is the way to go. Uh, Via Napoli is equally as good, but doesn't have the same kinds of food as Tutto Italia. They're more known for their brick oven pizza. They have other things, but again, they try to give you a little taste of everything. And Italy is a big place. It has a lot of cities in it. And so they're trying to give you food from all over. And then there's also a Tutto Gusto wine cellar. If you're a big wine person, you can go in there and do a wine tasting. You can get a wine flight. It's uh, And then there's all kinds of wine souvenirs that you can buy when you're in there as well. Absolutely. 
and we're moving on around the world showcase next up is germany and there is a cool little area outside in the open air that's fenced in and it has these trains running multiple trains running across and you know around all these tracks and that's that's really cool and that's been there for i think as long as we've been going right vic it well it's been there since the showcase opened and it's supposed to look like a german countryside yeah yeah it's very cool and there's also the beer garden and the caramel couche and that's where we get our infamous Werther's caramel popcorn and other caramel desserts and what are they called the Werther's originals the hard caramels and the caramel chews you know all things caramel including sugar-free yeah including sugar-free we get a lot of sugar-free ones from here too and you can also meet snow white in this area at germany check your schedule for time yep it's all about the schedule on this so yeah check those schedules so next to that is the outpost which is sometimes foods from australia sometimes it's american it's kind of like a melting pot of different things you just never know there's also musical instruments and souvenirs sold over there so you just need to stop by and check it out it's called the outpost it has like a thatched roof it's kind of woodsy looking um that's about all i can say about that i did have a brown sugar and cream cheese stuffed pretzel there in october of 2020 i'm not sure what that where that was from but it was pretty good Hmm. And ne next to that is the China Pavilion. And there is a lot of historical things for you to see in there. You go in, there's like a video about China. And then there is a huge store in the back. Again, I don't know that we find that one is quite as enticing as we do the Japan one. And um, we have bought some foods there just again to try different things. Because that's the time to try things. You may never go to China and then just gives you the opportunity to do that. Uh, the Nine Dragons restaurant. I, I'm wondering, Brad, if we need to try it again. It was a little out there for us when we ate it in 2010, and we haven't been back there. But a couple of the people, a couple of my clients, Karen and Megan, they love that place, and they keep, you know, they get that reservation a lot. And so I'm thinking maybe we need to try it again. Yeah, it was a little fringe for us, but maybe we can give it another shot. And they have the Lotus Blossom Cafe, which is like their quick service version. And the Joy of Tea, which has lots of different kinds of tea. And I know it has boba tea, which Kaylee keeps saying she wants to try. And we're moving on. Next up is Norway. And so at Norway, you can ride Frozen Ever After. And there's also a Kringle Bakery here. It's popular school bread they have here. And you can also meet Anna and Elsa from Frozen. So the rides here and the meet and greet is here as well. So very cool how they have all these things just lined up one after the other that you can just visit. Yes. Very cool. After Norway is Mexico. Before you enter the pavilion, you have Choza de Margarita. You can try all these different kinds of margaritas or you can go inside the pavilion and see uh, the characters from Coco. Also inside there is where you ride the Three Caballeros with Donald, Panchito, and Jose as they take you on a tour of Mexico. And then La Cabo de Tequila is where we took our friend's daughter when we when she turned 21, she wanted to go there. And then across the road is the quick service restaurant. It has obviously a quick version of what some of the sit down restaurants have there. So you have a wide variety of Mexican food to choose from. Yes, you do. Oh, and you have churros. That's the most important part. Yep, you do have a lot of choices. And yeah, churros are good. And so if you leave the Mexican pavilion, you're going to pass the Old Horizons building on the right. And you just keep winding around and you're going to head back towards the big orb or the geodesic sphere. And you're going to come to Test Track. That's one of our favorites. We like that ride. And if you keep going, you're going to hit Mission Space is also there. And across from Test Track is Connections Cafe and the Creation Shop. So lots of stuff in this little area too. If you walk a little further up, you're going to be back near the front by Guardians of the Galaxy. So the new ride. The new ride. So I just wanted to mention before we wrap up, Vic, a lot of times when we're going to this park, Epcot, we don't even make dining reservations because there's so much to choose from as you just walk so it's not necessary you're going to get plenty of food even if you have no reservation whatsoever but i get it if you have bucket list stuff go ahead and make reservations 
just to get it on your list and get it secured, but it's not really required for this rest, for this park, not necessarily. Especially during the festivals, but I do want to say if you have a park hopper and you don't have a favorite restaurant in one of the other parks, you could always park hop over there and do a dining reservation in Epcot, finishing out a Magic Kingdom Day or an Animal Kingdom Day or a Hollywood Studios Day. That's true. Or if you're staying at one of those really close resorts too, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Brad, for helping me do the walking, talking tour of Epcot. And of course, this is its 40th anniversary year. So um, I thought this was definitely appropriate for us to be talking about. A few final reminders before we sign off. If you are interested in being a guest on our show or you have a question or a comment, you can email us at Vicky. B-I-C-K-I dot black at yourstorytravel.com or you can text us at 636-373-4497. And if you would like to book a trip or just want a free quote, you can text Vicki at 636-373-4497. You can also check us out on our social media accounts, yourstorytravel.com, our Facebook page, The Mousecapades Podcast, or our TikTok account, Your Story Travel. Be sure to listen to Wednesday's show as we dish the latest rumors and news and chat with the gang. As always, thanks for listening to the number one podcast that entertains that space between your ears, The Mousecapades Podcast. Well, Brad, I think it's about that time. Disney love. Just keep swimming. Have a magical day, my friend. Remember-